Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasvic and in this video, I will show you a great way to schedule background jobs using the Quartz.net library. Background tasks are widespread when building applications. These tasks can be long running or repetitive and we don't want to run them in the foreground as they could affect the user experience of the application. So instead, we must schedule these jobs to run in the background somewhere. To achieve this in .NET, we can use the Quartz.net library to manage the creation and scheduling of these jobs. Now, as usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. That said, let's continue with this topic. Quartz.net, very simply put, is a job scheduling system for .NET applications. Very similar to a library such as Hangfire, Quartz.net allows us to easily create and schedule jobs to run on configured trigger. Now, I mentioned Hangfire. And if you want to learn more about that package that allows us to schedule background jobs efficiently and is also awesome, you can watch my previous video. The link will be in the description below. Now, there are different reasons why we want to schedule a job to be executed in the background. For example, some jobs require a lot of processing power that could affect our application performance. Other ones can block the user from freely navigating over the application while the process is being executed. In any case, it's not ideal to wait for these type of processes to finish. And for that, we can schedule those jobs in the background, usually initiated by some sort of trigger. Now, when we prepare the job to be executed in the background, with course.net, we have several steps to cover. We have to create a job, then we need to provide a trigger for the job, next we have to schedule the job, and finally, we store all the data regarding the job. Since I mentioned storage, Quartz.net needs somewhere to store all the schedule-related data such as jobs, triggers, job data, etc. By default, all this data is stored in memory, but that can be changed. Now, before I continue, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C# -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones so always check the links in the description below. Ok, let's start with the implementation. As you can see, I already have a project created and the first thing I want to do is to install the Quartz package. So, in the package manager, let's find the package Quartz extensions hosting and install it. After the installation is over, the next thing I want to do, as I explained earlier, is to create a new job. So let's add a new class and name it log background job. This class must inherit from the iJob interface that comes from the Quartz library. Also, I have to implement this interface. And as you can see, we get a single execute method that will be used to execute the job. Ok, so let's modify the execute methods implementation. This can be any type of work you want to execute, but of course, let's not complicate the solution here and implement a simple logging action. So, I will create a new read-only logger field here and use a constructor to initialize it, just with the generic type parameter here. Now, inside the method, I want to log simple information that my job is executed on a certain date. Also, I have to return task.completed task. Nice. That's all I need to do regarding the job creation. The next step is the Quartz configuration inside the program class. Here, I want to call the addQuartz method to configure Quartz services inside the service collection and I can configure it using the action delegate parameter. Now, in a lot of instructions online, you will see the usage of the use Microsoft Depends Injection Job Factory method. But as you can see, something is wrong here. You can see it's an obsolete method and it will be removed. So we don't need it as well. For now, I will leave the configuration empty and move on with another method named add quartz hosted services 
to add the hosted services implementation by Quartz. It will create a new instance of my background job when it's triggered by any trigger, which I will configure in a minute. Now, you might be wondering why you need to call both the add Quartz and add Quartz hosted service methods. That's because Quartz.net itself isn't tied to hosted service implementation. You're free to run the Quartz scheduler yourself if you want, which is explained in their official documentation. Okay, I can get back inside the add Quartz method and add my job inside the service collection. But first, I need a job key. And to create one, I will use the job key class and call the create method that accepts a single job name parameter. It is a string, so let's add the name for the job. Next, using the options parameter, I will call the add job method and provide my class implementation for the job as a generic type parameter. I also have to pass the job key as an argument. Okay, with this, I have a job registered, but I need to configure the trigger and scheduler. So, I will use the add trigger method to add the trigger for this job, and for that, I will use the for job method and provide the job key. This will tell Quartz which job to trigger. Also, I need to schedule the job, and there are different ways to do so. If I just type with, you can see a lot of different methods that we can use to schedule our job. We can use a cron scheduler, calendars, and other stuff. But in this case, let's go with a simple schedule method. Here, I will schedule this job to be executed every two seconds. And I want to repeat it. But again, as you can see, I can repeat it forever or a specific number of times. In this case, I will choose the first option to repeat it forever. There is one more thing I want to do here. I want to tell Quartz what to do when shutdown is requested and the job isn't completed yet. For that, I will add the builder parameter here and use it to call the wait for jobs to complete property and set it to true. With this, if shutdown is requested, we will not exit until the job is gracefully finished. So that's it for now. With this code, I have configured my job and once I run the application, you will see that the login job executes every two seconds. And it will do that forever. Great. But we might have a problem here. When we look at our job, we can see it will execute pretty quickly because after all, it is a simple logging operation. But what if, for example, this job needs at least 10 seconds to be executed? And if you take a look at the job scheduler, you can see we are scheduling the job every two seconds. This can lead to having multiple instances of the same job in the background. If you don't want to have that, of course, there might be cases where you do. But again, if you don't want to do that, you can modify the job class with a single attribute. The attribute is disallow concurrent execution. That's all we have to do to prevent concurrent execution of the job. Now, Quartz is a very powerful library. And when you read the documentation, you can find a lot of great features this library supports. But let's just see a few more of those. In our Quartz configuration, we can specify when we want to start our job. For that, we can use the start at method and provide a date time offset value here. So let's say I want to start it 10 seconds after the app starts. That's all. I can run the app and you can see the job isn't fired immediately as it did last time. But if we wait a bit and after 10 seconds, you can see the logging. Great. We can also write the same thing but using the Quartz feature called Date Builder. To show that, Let's remove this date offset value here and instead use the date builder class and call the future date method to set the future time value. Here I will provide the number 10 and the interval unit as seconds. This will have the same effect as the previous code. Also, 
we can specify the end date of the job. For that, I can call the end at method and again use the date builder class and the future date method to specify, for example, 5 hours interval period. Of course, this end date can be set to anything you want, a specific date or time or just an interval. As I said, the documentation is full of such information. Finally, I won't dive deep here about changing the storage for Quartz data. But if you want to do that, you can use the use persistent store method where you can provide the connection string and some other configuration. Of course, you must have a database with tables created. And for that, Quartz documentation has already prepared scripts. So, as you already know, running tasks in the background is a useful and important feature to implement in our applications for long running tasks. In this video, we looked at how we could create and schedule jobs with Quartz.net and also how to configure those jobs to be executed with different schedules. Of course, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.